Hey there, Jeff here, Home Renovation DIY, coming at you live on Friday, November the 1st. Wow, what a busy week we've had. I'm telling you right now, it has been absolutely something. We're knee, knee deep into our kitchen renovation. We're getting appliances on Monday. We finally had the granite installed today. What an ordeal that was. Can't wait to share that truth and story with you. But tonight, we're doing a live show because we're here to talk about a bunch of stuff. One, we have a new channel coming out. We'll talk about that later. Two, I really want to get into, I did some uh, uh, specialized training last week. Um, I was at Schluter. If you're familiar with that, the orange membrane stuff. That company was doing a training seminar and they do hands-on training for all of the industry people. And I went for training and brought my son with me. It has been 10 years, I think, before, since my last time. And wow, have they ever evolved. They have got products that are so exciting. Um, I reached out and was talking to some of the folks at office and they're gonna uh, help us to do some videos on my next project. And we're gonna be showing all of the products related to um, shower renovation and all the, listen, it's just way too much to talk about today. We're gonna touch on it a little bit later in the show. But we also wanted to talk about, I put out a poll, thank you. There's like over a thousand people who responded to the poll. That is very awesome. And in that poll, we had, uh, uh, it was close to 50-50, about a 40-60 split. Talking about asbestos and tools for homeowners. Now, tonight, Maddie is not with me. So, you're gonna have to bear with me. I am trying to figure out how to find the live stream, Max. I am not seeing a darn thing over here. But uh, we will sort this out and be getting into that in just a minute. The good news is my brain operates separate from my arm. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, come on in, Max. He hates being on camera. Whoa, wait, I, I, there we go, live, live now. There he is. I'm clicking on some buttons. We're gonna see what happens. I'm trying to get the comments here so I can answer questions. Oh, uh, maybe you can sort this out for me. I don't know. Yeah, sure. It's your thing. You're like the sort, technology. Sort of I use a hammer, dude. I don't know. Sorry about that. We did do one improvement though. Hey, quick in the comments, let us know. What do you think of the new mic, right? This bad boy here, it's a new feature. We bought some new sound equipment. That'd be me. Well, there you are. Yes. Oh, that's me. There's a little bit of a delay. That's okay. Put yes. The off and we're good to go. Okay. So I need to get the comments. That's uh, this is all I want to see. Can we hit that yeah. chat button there and maybe shut him up? <laughs> He's irritating to listen to. There you go. Okay. All right. That's muted. That's good. Can I make this huge? I don't think so. You have to see yourself. Really? Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. Sweet, I made it. Okay, guys, I'm just gonna go jump into this real quick. Because I'm kind of like working one hand behind my back without my son here tonight. Um, hey, Robert Butler, member, finally able to make the live stream, very cool. Terry's here as well, he's a member. Great sound, five, five, 10 feet wide. <laughs> very cool. All right, so now we know the sound works. Let's, let's have some content that people would give a damn to hear about. Marilyn says hi, congratulations. Thanks guys, listen, lots of love, love the love. We were absolutely blown away. When we announced we were gonna do the new channel, we were honestly, our expectation was, we were really hoping that we'd be able to get a thousand subscribers for the new channel, just so that when it starts, we could activate some of the things like, um, we wanna be able to do stories and that sort of thing right away. And you know how YouTube works is you have to get to a certain size before they they feed you a little bit more, right? Before you have a little more wings to fly, as it were. So it was nice. I mean, you guys are absolutely blowing us away with your response. So we're gonna talk about the new channel a little bit later. I know the format today is different. Usually we do one hour live stream for subscribers, and then we have an hour set aside for members. Today, we're blending it all together. We're gonna to go two hours live. That means I don't get a break. <laughs> so this will be interesting. Um, we, uh, yay, figured out how to do the live stream. Yeah, we're getting there, we're, we're getting there. Cheers from Australia. Are you kidding me? What time is it in Australia right now? Six o'clock in the morning. Well, good morning. And uh, I wish, yeah, coffee, nice. Learned a lot from my videos. Well, that's cool, I've learned, Max has learned a lot too. 
We just finished filming today. He did another project at his house. It's kind of exciting. Uh, tips for finding wholesalers. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that. Okay, let's go through the list today. Today we're going to talk about asbestos. Bum, bum, bum. Right? Subject I love to hate. Um, tools for homeowners. Because since we have two hours, we've got time to talk about everything. And I don't ever get dry mouth, so that's good news. We're going to talk about the paid sponsorship. All right? A touchy subject, and I'm not afraid to talk about it. And then we're going to talk about Schluter. And then we're going to talk about the new channel. All right? That's cool. So if you have questions about your life that you want to jump in here, then we will get into all of that. But I'm going to need a few minutes to go through some of this content. We are going to take some of this content that we're filming, and we're going to um, do some editing work and turn it into individual videos that we're going to upload on as extras on Tuesday. So bear with us. So if you're watching us live and you've seen what we're going to say and it comes out in a video, feel free to give us a thumbs up and like the video anyway when you do see it because all of those signals help YouTube to realize that you like the content, there's information worth hearing, and they want to share it with other people. So that's important. Now, asbestos. Whoa, let's just talk asbestos. Asbestos has got probably the worst rap as far as building materials in the history of mankind. And it's really it's sad because what it is, it's a naturally occurring mineral. It's actually, it's not a manufactured product, okay? It's a processed mineral. And it has a lot of really interesting benefits, especially when it comes to being like the thermal issue, all right, for insulation, for protective um, situations to protect people from heat. But what's happened is all of the manufacturing processes and the application of this product have been um, without any, how shall we call it, oversight. There's no, no rules and regulations for personal health. Now in the last, and I know this is going to sound strange, but for the younger audience out there, for the last 20 years, things have been changing. People are actually concerned about their health. <laughs> Up until that point, I mean, um, we all worked to survive and it was a cost of doing business. Uh, whatever you did for a living was going to kill you. And there was really no thought about, is this a good idea? Am I safe? Uh, it, it was, it's a relatively new concept in the world. And so they realized a while back that asbestos was actually kind of dangerous and they, they've gotten rid of it because they've replaced it with other technology. And asbestos, as it's in and of itself, is only dangerous if you inhale it. Okay? Understand that one very basic principle. If you inhale the, the molecules of asbestos, it's dangerous because it's like a fish hook. And there are different kinds of asbestos manufactured products, and some of them are more dangerous than others. Some of them have more um, concentrated amounts of it in the product. So drywall that has a little asbestos in it, generally speaking, is very, very minimal. It is not a concern. Um, there are some floor tiles that have got asbestos in it. And when you break those, they're very dangerous. But if you're only renovating, let me put it this way. If you're renovating your own house, and you don't do this and flip a house every six months, and you don't continually buy homes full of asbestos, the chance that you're going to develop anything as a result of uh, um, uh, occasional minor exposure is really, really small, okay? It'd be like saying, I'm afraid to go walk through the streets of New York because there's so much car exhaust. It's just, it's, it's a little bit on the nutty side. Now, we have a lot of advertisements out there, mesothelioma. Call this number, you could get paid. Like, we're talking about people who worked in manufacturing environments who are getting paid. Nobody in the world of homeowners has said, oh, I ripped up my floor tiles that were eight by eight vinyl glued to my concrete in the basement once is getting paid. That's just not happening, right? So let's just get a little real, a little relaxed, okay? Asbestos is dangerous if you have a prolonged exposure over a long period of time, right? Like the sun. <laughs> if you lay out in the sun in Miami continually, it will kill you. We don't say don't go outside because the sun's up. It's the same kind of thing, right? A little bit of anything isn't going to be a big problem. So relax. If you have asbestos in your house and you're concerned about it, be responsible. 
um, don't disturb it or wear a mask. Set up negative air. It's not tricky, right? Uh, we have videos on how to set up negative air. It's as simple as putting in a fan, wearing a mask. You don't have to wear the whole ET suit and set up the plastic. All of those things that you see in the videos and YouTube where they have this whole, you know, um, I don't know. It's like a negative air chamber. They've got armholes and people can work from the other side of the plastic wall. Ah, I mean, it's just ridiculous, right? This is all to protect the workers who are working in that industry all day, every day. You do not have anything to worry about, all right? It's like, it's like trying to say, if you were to stick your mouth on the end of an exhaust pipe on a car, all right, and stay there for eight hours and that's your shift, that's dangerous, all right? But to turn on your car in the garage and then drive out is not gonna bother you. It's the same kind of deal. So let's all take a deep breath Asbestos is dangerous if you have massive exposure to it. If you have a little bit, be smart. Wear a mask, get some fresh air, right? Vacuum the mess up. Um, before you're peeling it off your pipes, if you have pipe wrap, wet it down, cover it in plastic bags and take one section at a time. Be smart, but don't be crazy. Let's not get all worked up over it. You don't all have to start sending samples of everything in your house to the lab. If it's an old house, you're gonna have asbestos, you're gonna have lead. All of these things are dangerous. Be smart, wear a mask, put a fan in the window, and we will all survive to live another day. Now, next subject matter. Tools for homeowners. Wow, it's an interesting topic because I think, let's break down tools for homeowners. Now I'm gonna get back into the questions real quick. I've gotta do both things here today. Uh, Schluter, someone noticed the Schluter hat, yeah. They're not sponsoring this video, just for the record. I got a free hat because I went for training. So I thought I'd wear it today. All right. What do you think of my hat? I got a few extras. I'm going to hand them out on my mama tour. Ah, la, 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 la. Okay. Hola. Lots of people commenting and talking. Good, sensible advice. Well, I kind of think so. You know, like, I've had lots of comments on the channel. Oh, dude, you're breathing. Yeah, I'm working, man. <laughs> You ever gone for a jog and had a, had a conversation? Like, it's enough to almost want to kill you. It's all right. So let's talk about tools for homeowners. First of all, if you're a homeowner and you're new to the DIY renovation world, I'm going to suggest you start with painting. Start with the finishing end of things and work your way backwards, okay? Because painting is something that you're going to have to do no matter what you renovate. And if you're not a good painter, you can ask yourself this very important question. If I can't paint a room, should I really tackle ripping it apart and starting over? The answer is no. <laughs> Learn how to paint. Learn how to finish. And then go backwards. Learn how to do drywall. All right? Once you've got some comfortability with the tools, you're good. And remember, paint requires a brush and a roller and a tray. There's a few other hand tools you need. And we've got a video coming out about this relatively soon the next few weeks, I don't know, maybe a month. We've been busy filming like mad dogs in this kitchen renovation. And for relatively low cost, you can become pretty handy and refresh and update a lot of your life learning how to paint. If you move backwards down the production scale, you can get into uh, drywall work and flooring installation, especially floating floors like laminate and vinyls. You can learn how to do that with very limited tools. Some of the vinyl products on the market, you can actually cut with a knife. We did this installation in my new kitchen. We used a vinyl plank flooring. I'm telling you right now, it changed my world. I have never seen a product that was so easy to work with in all my life. Locks together incredibly tight. I'm so excited about sharing this with you. It's gonna, I mean, gonna change the world. If you have painting gear and a utility knife and a measuring tape, you can do a lot. Move back in time, add a couple drywall knives. You can do drywall work and a, and a drill. Once you've got a drill, anything brushless is gonna last a lifetime. Invest in a good drill. I was at the store today picking up some product and there was a DeWalt drill. It was on regular price, 130 bucks, 140 bucks. Comes in a bag. This is Canadian, mind you, so for you Americans, it'd probably be like $29. It was a good deal. And it, it's the kind of drill that you can buy once as a homeowner to last you a lifetime. So feel free to buy a really good quality drill. Then you move back down the list. It's like, okay, so now you're docking finished carpentry. That's another thing you might want to get into. 
Now you got to get yourself a saw. Uh, we just finished doing a trim series and I used a 10 inch blade compound miter saw, no sliding action. I tried to use the most basic kind of tool that you can find because on our channel we love to use basic tools. I should be paying more attention to the screen. My God. I have a black eye in some of my old videos. Yes, I had a black eye. Can we just address that, you know? Like, I want to get this out there. <laughs> um, no, I didn't have a, the crap beat out of me. No, my, it wasn't my wife. Uh, and, and everybody leaving comments about the, my wife, really, I mean, it's not necessary. Uh, to be honest with you, um, I don't condone violence in anybody's home against anybody, but uh, she did not beat me up. Um, what happened, and I told the story so many times, and I feel like it's falling on deaf ears. I was working with my son. He was helping me on that basement renovation that we were filming. And he wanted to go and play some basketball because he was getting good at basketball. The kid was 6'2 at the time. Big surprise, he was good at basketball, right? So we went and played a little basketball. And sure enough, he was kicking my butt. It was embarrassing. I mean, it was just 21. And I think it was like 18 to 3. And that was just from a lucky hook shot when I wasn't really looking. The point is, is... I don't like to lose and I'm a little competitive and apparently it rubbed off on him. So as he was about to drive the net, I didn't see this coming. I went in for a steal. So he dropped his head and he hit me right off the top of the corner of the eye with his forehead as I went, reached in for the ball, laid me out. I'm on the ground. I'm almost unconscious. And all I remember when I got up is I could only see half of the horizon because my, my, my eyes swelled up immediately. And he was laughing. I looked over. He was on the ground laughing. He almost peed himself. And uh, <laughs> what do you do, right? We were a new channel. We'd already promised everybody we were going to do a video every week. We had nothing in the bank. We learned that weekend that it's important to be a few weeks ahead of the game. And uh, so this is all it is. It's just a harmless accident. It wasn't even on the work site for me not wearing safety glasses. Imagine that. Most of the injuries I've, I've received in my life have been related to my children, not my job. And that's irony, isn't it? Um, especially when I'm a safety second kind of guy. All right. So nice to see all you guys chatting with each other. This is cool. What an awesome community. You know, one of the things I've noticed in the comment section is there's been a, a lot more um, people are answering questions with intelligent thoughts lately. It's been really a lot of fun. Uh, good to see you guys helping me out because I'm so busy trying to renovate and make videos I don't get to answer every question anymore um, <laughs> This is awesome. Okay. Well, here we go uh, tools for homeowners so If we were to talk about your basic tools, it's you need to be able to measure you need to be able to cut and You need to be able to finish right now. I think for $500 Every homeowner can have all of the basic tools. You can have a chop saw, a circular saw, a drill. That's about 500 bucks. You know, throw in a few extra bucks for a good tape measure and a pencil, and I think you're pretty much off to the races. It's really not that tricky, right? Um, but if you're not going to get into major construction, you're just remodeling, then, then leave the big saws at home, right? You can do most of your projects with hand tools and not even get into major power tools as long as you've got a drill. That's the beautiful thing about it. So I think one of these days, Max, we're going to have to make a video where we talk about all the different things you can do with just a really small tool setup, right? And so then people can start renovating based on their tools instead of buying tools based on the project. It's kind of a reverse way to look at it. That way people can budget. That's not a bad idea. Don't know where that came from. Anyway, let me know in the comment section if you think that's a good idea, right? Uh, all the different things you can do with, let's say, $100 worth of tools. All right? I don't know. I'm going to just check here. Bum, 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 bum. Yes, I've tried all of the tools. Listen, I've got a whole shed, don't even tell anybody, full of tools I don't use right now. And it's because I'm trying to do all the renovations on camera with the most minimal amount of tools. I have a fine multi-tool I haven't used in three years. The darn thing cost me 400 bucks. It's a great tool. I love using it, but I don't use it on my channel because I feel like I'm cheating. Because I don't expect every homeowner out there to spend $400 on a fine multi-tool. Personally, I think multi-tools are for trades, not for homeowners. 
Now, if you've got like nothing but time and budget and you want to go and buy every tool in the world, go right ahead. I've worked in people's homes, renovated their houses for them. They had brand new tools sitting around they'd never even used. That was one guy had a nicer saw than I did and he didn't even know how to turn it on, right? And that's just crazy people that it was like, uh, it's Father's Day, let's buy dad a thousand dollar saw. And it's just not fair. But uh, for the most part, let's be smart. Somebody wants to know their rate per hour per job. Okay, that's easy. Um, where do you live? What's your cost of living? What's your tax base? What are the people around you charging? Uh, it, it, come on, seriously. We're not going to get into how to run your business on this channel. Um, other than don't devalue yourself, right? You need to, uh, you need to make a living. Uh, somebody says I have a, I got one for you. okay. Sure. You actually built the entire shed that we did yes. without a chop saw. Yes. At all. No, no chop saw. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you want to know, we built the shed and all I used was a circular saw. I think I used a reciprocator on one occasion, maybe twice. Hard to say, but yeah, that's the point, right? We try to make it simple because life should be simple. Anyway, um, oh, Steve lives in Kitchener. I, I spent a lot of time in Kitchener, Steve. Uh, oh, they're talking about this whole, yeah, the share a tool thing. Yeah, anything to save a buck, eh? Why not? I'm all down for that. All right. Um, it's at the time of the video where I'm going to talk about a paid sponsorship opportunities. Now, listen. We, let's just talk turkey on the channel here because we are at a point in our channel size, bum, ba, ba, bum, and maybe this conversation you guys can get into. I'd really love to hear what you have to say about this. But we are getting emails every day from countless numbers of people saying, hey, how'd you like to do a video for us? And basically our answer to all of them is no answer. We don't have time to tell everybody no. We have an automated response that says, thanks, but no thanks. And on occasion, we'll pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Here's the occasion. I've been in the business for a long time, longer than most companies have been selling products. And I know which ones I like. I know which tools I like. And every once in a while, someone will come up with a new project, product and, and I'll investigate it and I'll research it. I'll go for training and I'll learn about it. And then I'll make a decision and I'll make a video with it. I'm not out there selling my soul to make a quick buck, okay? That's not the point of this channel. I want you guys to feel like when I have an opinion, it's valid. Yes, there are a couple of occasions where people have given us products and yes, there's been one occasion where someone even gave us some money. Woo, big deal, right? Man's gotta make a living. Don't forget, last December, I closed down my construction company so that I could focus all my attention on making videos for you guys. And um, to be perfectly honest, I'm not gonna apologize if somebody's gonna give me some free product to put in one of our videos. It's just not gonna happen. Anything that can be done to help make this affordable and make this venture profitable so that we can continue doing it is going to be good for you. Um, so how about we do this? If I'm getting paid to say something, I'll tell you. If someone's giving me product to put in the video, I'll tell you. But I don't want to have any more comments on the channel about, oh, he's getting paid if I didn't say so, because it's not going to be the truth. All right? Fair enough. Uh, this message is held for review. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, Max. Oh, somebody made a comment that's held for review. If it's being held for review, it's probably never going to see the light of day. Uh, now listen, this is not a beauty channel, right? I know that there are people out there in the makeup world that are getting paid $100,000 a video to promote a beauty brand, all right? That's not happening in the renovation world. Uh, the biggest numbers we've seen floating around so far are maybe $1,000 to use their product, right? And at that point, I'm, I'm just saying no. If all you're gonna do is give me $1,000 to promote a product and then say it's a paid video, I don't want you all thinking I made $60,000 promoting a product because it's like, 
it's table scraps really at the end of the day. So uh, there are companies coming up that I've taken their products and I'm more than happy to do so because I think they're good products and I'll give them a shout out. Uh, make sure you're getting paid to use good product. Don't advertise that Chinese drama. <laughs> All right. Um, that's right. I have to state if it's sponsored. Now, good question, Steve, because the details say I have to, I have to identify if it's a paid sponsorship video. If somebody gives me a product, is that getting paid? The question has been asked. I asked YouTube waiting for an answer. So far, just don't take random crap. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I've got enough crap. When we first started the channel, people would ask us, hey, can you show this? Can you show this? And we just, our basic answer was, you can go ahead and send it to us and Jeff will check it out. If he likes it, he might show it. And I got a whole shelf full of crap. You wouldn't be surprised. So now the answer is just no to everybody. I am going to Las Vegas in the end of January for the National Builder Show. It's my intention to go and talk Turkey with big brands and all of the CEOs and national account managers there to try to work out deals for you guys. All right. I'm a Canadian. I don't need much. I am no ambition to have a slip with a yacht, a private island, nothing like that. All right. Um, I'm a happy guy. I got four healthy kids and they're all doing just great. My wife still loves me and it's 30 plus years. Uh, I got I got a great Max to help me with the channel. You know, I'm a simple man. My health care is paid for. Uh, I have no ambitions to take over the world, all right? Uh, you know, the, uh, if I could do anything in life, it would be awesome if I'd be able to help set up a, a system where everybody who watches this channel could, could buy their stuff for the renovations at a discounted price. That's starting to happen. Um, Recently, we've been doing videos and you're going to see 10% off here, a little bit off here. I'm hoping after the next um, Vegas show, it'll be um, stupid, awesome deals, okay? Because the regular supply chain, it's a joke, right? Let's just be fair. Everything that gets sold from manufacturing to retail, which is what you're, you're buying, is a 400% markup. So it makes sense that if I have a large enough audience watching that I should be able to go to these brands and say, I want to deliver straight to them. What kind of deal can you get me? I'm not going to tell you what kind of deals are working out right now, but be excited because things are happening and we're moving in that direction. And I'm really hoping in the near future that we'll be able to make some announcements that'll just make you throw your hat off. I mean, so, Hey, you know, uh, we're, we're doing what we can. We're the largest independent channel in the home renovation space in the world. What do you do? Right? Like, <laughs> new territory here, right? We're, I mean, YouTube used to be a place for silly videos for silly people, and now everyone's growing up and realizing there's a resource. And so we're moving into a new place. Hopefully, thanks for all your knowledge. <laughs> Cheers to the tip, Edward. Loving it. I'll take that any day of the week. I, I'm, <laughs> there you go, Max. That's, and for everybody who's um, not a big YouTube fan, but you found yourself here anyway, that's what they call a super chat. Uh, I am not allergic to that, so feel free. All right, now, enough about paid sponsorship, all right? If someone's gonna pay me money to show you something that I'm gonna show you anyway, you're damn right I'm gonna take it. I'll make sure to tell you about it. You don't have to worry about it. At the end of the day, our goal is to give you a better deal than I'm getting from them, trust me. Next, Schluter update. Okay, 20 million tree effort. Well, I only have a clue what 20 million trees look like, but I'll guarantee you if you drive 15 minutes north from across the river in Ottawa on any Quebec highway, you'll see 20 million trees. That doesn't sound as impressive as you think it does. <laughs> All right, we're only 6.30, this is awesome. Okay, Eduardo. Is a new member. Very cool. Welcome to the team, the DIY Nation. Uh, Tim says that my video is motivated to tile his bathroom. That's cool. How'd it work out? I'd love to see a picture one of these days. 
man, this is so humbling. I'm just sitting here reading this going, wow, my God, guys, seriously. Oh, you can't get Schluter in Australia. Oh, that does suck. But that will not be the way it is forever. It's like anything in Australia, right? You're so damn far away. If you don't make it yourself, you're never going to see it. I mean, let's just be honest. <laughs> That's a trip. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay. Maybe we can work that out. Um, I can't really talk about what I'm doing with Schluter, but I will tell you this. I'm doing a couple videos coming up in the next project we're working on. We're doing two different kinds of bathrooms. And we're going to be covering a lot of the Schluter products and simplifying the whole thing so that you can use it effectively at home. I know we've got some old Schluter videos, but they're old. Things have changed. Products are different. Installation methods are different. And the simplicity factor is different. So now, although Schluter still markets themselves as a company that they're selling to installers for, the opportunity for homeowners to use their products and be successful with them is astronomical. So we're going to help bridge that gap. Not because they're asking me to or paying me to, because I want to. I'm actually in discussion with them right now, hoping that they will let me share the technology and teach you how to do Schluter while I'm on my tour, which would be awesome. Uh, are, am I able to identify where your subscribers are found geographically? Yes, but not your street address. It just basically tells me country by country. That's about all I get. In case you want to know. Uh, will you take a sponsor's money even if they don't like the product? Even if I don't like the product? <laughs> Rule number one. If somebody's going to pay me to make a video review, I get paid up front. All right, go ahead, Max. What's the question? Oh, Max, got the mic going. Somebody was asking about carpet. Are we ever going to show how to install it? <laughs> yes! I have my theater room, which is going to get carpet soon. We're going to film that. And oh, wait a minute, this is funny. Liam just sent us a super chat. <laughs> it says, my wife Samantha says you are her celebrity crush. First of all, Liam, um, Samantha sounds like a really intelligent lady. Uh, I'm not a celebrity, but <sighs> yeah, that's cute. All right, fair enough. Whatever, what do you do with that? I have no idea. Am I all blushing now? Uh, hey! Yeah, there we go. They got a member here. We did, we bumped into each other at the local Home Depot. That was funny. You know, and he was gonna call me that day and instead I answered him right there on the spot and did not take his $2 a minute. Imagine that. Wow, what a nice guy. Okay, uh, Judy is ripping out carpet tonight. Delta to follow. Chilling my beer to do all this. Hi from Guelph. That's quite a message. Um, ripping out carpet is easy. You're going to love it. You're going to be done faster than you think. And um, yeah, nothing wrong with having a chilled beer. All right. Uh, wow. Chuck, you're a bit of a Debbie Downer there, buddy. Uh huh. Okay, moving on. Talking about products, where do I? Well, this is moving faster than I can scroll. Where do I start? I'm choosing between all the different options, brands, blah, blah, blah. Trying to find foundation cracks. Yeah, yeah, you got to talk to a foundation expert. There's only two ways to fix a crack one is from the outside, and one is from the inside. Outside always lasts longer, but the inside still works if it's not a major crack. I don't know what else to say. This isn't a crack video, but we'll ask me that question on, uh, on tomorrow night's video. And I will do an in-depth answer because you remember, and I will give you tons of information, and it will be good for you. Um, as a handyman, I learned a ton from your channel. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad, John, that I was able to be of some assistance. That is awesome. Uh, ba -ba 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 Okay, wow. I'd like to see an episode where it transition between floor types and types of heights of videos. You know, Jack, that's a great idea. We actually thought about doing a live video where we could bring in a bunch of different building materials and just stack them up in front of me and show you all the different assemblies. 
Max, let's make a note of that. Let's do that in the next live show. That'll be a really good idea. Jack, coming your way in a few weeks. We will uh, update you on the next live show and you will be able to get that information. This isn't a crack video. No, it's not. Not a crack video. Not at all. Um, there's a members only chat next. Not today, Steve. We're just going to keep on going, but I'm only going to listen to members after seven o'clock. <laughs> we'll let everybody else chime in. Oh my God. So what happens at eight? What happens at eight o'clock? Eight o'clock is the launch of our new channel. Should we get into that now? I think. The Schluter update. I'm going to do a Schluter update first, okay? Schluter. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Uh, new products. A. New product manual. Let's check this out. What? Is that a shelf? Oh my God. A Schluter shelf? Really? And it's decorative? And it matches the drain? <sighs> I know that the misconception out there that Schluter is expensive, but if you were to take the cost of paying any renovator to do a really basic shower renovation for you, and you were to purchase good quality products and do it yourself because you've got a guy that you can watch in the video and he'll show you how to do it. You actually increase the value of your home like crazy because how do I do this without getting too weird? I love the technology of Schluter. Do you know that there is more water going through your shower in your house if you live alone than they see every year annually in, let's say, Seattle, right? You get five times as much rainfall in your shower as Seattle does, okay? It is the wettest, <laughs> the wettest room in the house. Uh, that was just the old uh, silver play button, you know? We're going to replace it with a gold one soon. It's not a worry. So, listen. If you're going to put a shower in your house and you're planning on having a shower every day, which I recommend, and it's going to take you more than a few minutes, you're going to have so much water going through it. You need something that actually works so that you don't have to replace it every five to 10 years because of the mold. This is the system that will work for you and you can have it pretty and it can be simple and you can do it yourself and you can make your house worth a lot of money. Now, uh, guys like me, when we renovate with a Schluter system, we get a 20-year guarantee from the company on the work that we do. It's insane, right? We can even do a new construction and transfer that warranty if we write in and get approved, which is never really a problem. And we can give it to the new homeowner. That's how confident they are with their program. Did I say program? I'm Canadian, okay? I'm not an idiot. That's how comfortable they are with their program. Now, this book is it's a list of all the materials and updates this is just the purchasing catalog of all their products they have more solutions in here than you have problems okay i'm just saying so what we're going to do is i'm breaking down all of this into something that's really easy and i'm going to break it into a couple of major projects that everybody can use at home so that you can be successful with schluter and Yes, I'm hoping to be able to make the products available as well. Might be letting the cat out of the bag a little early there. Cheers, Patrick. Well, there's another one of those. What do they call it? Things where people send you money. There you go, Max. That was fun. Um, so anyway, Schluter, I love them. All right. And they seem to like me. So maybe we can work something out for you guys down the road. Regardless, I'm going to do these bathrooms and I'm going to show you how to use their stuff because uh, my next project is actually my daughter's house. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I just finished my own kitchen. Plants has come Monday. And uh, next thing I'm doing is we're actually going there tomorrow morning to do the demolition. She just bought a brand new house and I just used the word demolition. It seems like an oxymoron. The reality is, is... I sat in on the whole process for her when she was selecting her house, selecting the model and the design and, and all the fixtures and finishes. We came up with a plan that allowed her to buy a brand new house so cheap and then we're going to modify it and make it worth so much money. It's going to be a blueprint for a lot of people to use when they're buying homes because when you buy a house in a decent market, by the time they actually build it, it's worth more than when you bought it. And if you make the modifications we're making to it, 
it's gonna blow your mind. And so we're gonna do all that with Schluter products because it makes my life simple. And I can do two bathrooms plus a kitchenette slash bar area. And I can do it in about three weeks. And so that is gonna be awesome. Okay, 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 back to some questions real quick. Gotta catch up. Schluter has an iPhone iOS app that is awesome. Yes, Jack, they do. They have an app. Actually, they have an app and they also have um, a thermostat that's Wi-Fi enabled. So let's say you get off work early and you live somewhere cold like not Miami and you're on the way home and you can just, you can hit the Wi-Fi app on your phone. You can say, hey, I'm coming home. I really feel like it's bath day. Heat my damn floor for me. Boop. And life is good, right? Holy first world problems having cold tile floor and a custom bath. Alrighty. Um, but yeah, the, the app is awesome because you can actually, as a, as a tradesman, you can go in and use the app to measure the space and it'll tell you exactly how much heating cable you need and all that kind of jazz. It's pretty cool. More solutions than you got problems. It's very true. I'm way back in time here now. Uh, second vote for UK deals. Yeah, I'm not leaving you out. Um, we have plans for helping our folks in the UK as well. Uh... Okay, that must be Coach. I see that icon with the dog calling me a handsome sob. Thinking that might be short form, I'm just saying. Coach is always crushing and I never really quite understand how a dog learned how to type. All right, um, <laughs> uh, John, greetings from Arizona. You're down to earth teaching and so refreshing. Oh, cool. Glad to be a member. I'm glad to have you as a member, John. That's cool. What's Arizona like this time of year? Let me guess. Gorgeous. Our weather is crap already. We had five weeks of summer and I'm ready to leave. November 1st, I'm already ready to jump on a plane. The only thing I'm here for is I have to film more videos for all of you. That's right. Or I would already be down south. Uh, I'm really hoping that next year maybe we'll buy a house in Florida in an abandoned neighborhood from one of those natural disasters and fix it up. And that would be really fun to do. And then I'd have a winter home. What a great idea. Uh, are you licensed? Yes, I have a driver's license. Thanks for asking. Um, Ta, where's the hat? Ku Ta, what hat is? My hat. Oh, who cares? It's Schluter. Come on, seriously? Like, where is the thing? Over here somewhere? Yeah. All right, uh, I'm going to go through some questions here and comments. Is a 12 and a half by 12 and a half drain location normal for a corner shower in a basement? I think the room is really irrelevant, but usually my experience is, uh, is that or 16, depending on the size of the shower and the manufacturer. But if you're worried about... <laughs> Wow, this is freaking me out because I can see the video and it's so time-lapse. Uh, if you're worried about um, if it's like a new home construction and your drain's not in the right location, bum, 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 stay tuned because I'm going to do a shower renovation in a new home that has a rough-in plumbing in the wrong spot and I don't have to open up the concrete. Uh, that's right. Going to be exciting. All right. Uh, now. Tile bathroom, is it better to take it down or do tile over tile? Well, that all depends on your comfort factor there, Steve. But in a lot of cases, for a couple hundred bucks, you could put tile over tile and get another 10 years out of it. So I'll let you be the judge on that one. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Whoa, Nancy is a new member. Hey, congratulations, Nancy. Welcome to the DIY crew. All righty. And da, da, da. can I use this product for a shower pan in lieu of cement? I don't know what product we're talking about. Oh, Lord, this is going so fast. Wow, no wonder Matt goes crazy trying to read this. Self-leveling compound for plywood subfloor anytime. Yes, we just finished filming that video. We did that in my kitchen because I have an 1880 house, which means if you don't use self-leveling, you're an idiot. David Carr, my city only has four inspectors. They're really stretched, so I can't even get them to call me. Oh, neat. Hey, David, guaranteed. If the city inspector can't show up in a reasonable amount of time, it'll be laid down in the bylaw. You officially pass your inspection. 
So I would go and do a little research because they have no legal right to hold you up if they can't do their job. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Okay. Ha, what's involved with taking a room with a flat ceiling and vaulting it? Rip out the ceiling. Yeah, man, that's a really tough question because it all depends on what kind of framing you have too. Uh, in my house, we had framing. We just finished the video, didn't we? The collar tie video? We talked about that? So if you want to have information and you haven't seen that video, watch it. If you have seen that video, uh, you're going to have to maybe become a member and, and then send me an email and ask me about that and share your specific situation because I'd be happy to go through options. But uh, sometimes your best option is get a structural engineer on site. You know, about 150 bucks for a site visit and then they charge you like 100 $150 an hour to talk. So uh, you can get a lot of good information for a few, mem few minutes there. Claude is another new member. Wow, welcome to the DIY crew, Nancy. That was me typing. Oh, that's right. So for everybody who sees my picture beside the comments here, that's my wife at home moderating the channel, making sure all the nasty things aren't really said. She's awesome. But I should clarify. Um, I do answer my own comments and my own questions. I do it every morning and every night. God help me. It takes some effort and I don't get to all of them and I apologize. I try to prioritize. So if you're asking questions in our newest video release, that's where I focus most of my attention. Uh, if you're a member, then I'll answer your questions. And we have worked out that system where I'm always notified, contrary to popular belief. If for some reason I miss your question, feel free to ask it again. Okay? I get all the questions shown up in my live feed. So when I go and wake up in the morning and I grab my coffee and I sit down on my computer, I hit a button and it goes, Boop, comments I haven't answered. And it's chronological from now to back in time. Now I know I went to sleep 10 hours earlier or six. And so I'll go back six hours ago and start looking through the comments. If I missed your question, just put it in again. You'll show up at the top of the list. It's really not a big concern. I don't claim to be perfect. I'm just doing my best to help. Don't be too harsh. Hi, Jeff's wife. Oh, that was nice, Steve. Let's keep it civil or I will have to come down to Kitchener and kick your butt. All right. <laughs> Do I have certain suppliers to go to constantly? Yes. When you have a store that gives you great information and good product at a good price, you continue to go there. Um, am I going to tell you all of them right now? No, because most of them are regional. If I come to Florida, make a clear water, been there, love it. I actually go to Ogdensburg Airport and fly there direct. Yeah. Great deal. I drive across the bridge at the border from Canada, US, and I'm at the Ogdensburg airport from my house in less than 30 minutes, including the border stop, because nobody uses that bridge. I think it was a, like maybe an election promise or somebody's put together to put that bridge there. Nobody used it. So we just kind of drive by and wave, and the guy goes, hey, good to see you again. That's pretty much my bridge crossing. Uh, yeah, no way. Eh? Um, where did you learn all this stuff? Where? Well, it wasn't in one place or at one moment, that's for sure. Um, you know what? Some, some, of the, some of the ways that you can learn about all these things is ask questions all your life. If you're not sure about something, uh, go take a training course. Every manufacturer of every product on the planet will do a training course and they will invite you to come for free if you're in the trades and you can expand your understanding and knowledge like faster than... You can learn anything on YouTube, I'll tell you. You really just gotta be, you know, focused and wanna do it. The information's out there. Okay, look at that, I've caught up, wow. Uh, okay, thanks Steve for not trolling my wife, appreciate it. Um, uh, okay, how do I feel about drywall on the ceiling in a basement and does it have to be fire guard in Alberta? The house is 16 years old, no leaks. Bah. Okay, hey. Residential construction, single family home, there is no fire rating in it, so don't worry about that. Um, using fire rated drywall makes it quieter. And drywall on a ceiling, why the heck not, right? The old days, people would say, oh, let's put in a suspended ceiling, then we can have access to the plumbing. Okay, that's, let's just think that through. 
your plumbing systems are designed to last 100 years. You got a 16 year old house. How good is that suspended ceiling going to look in 84 years when you're going to have an issue? And it's only drywall. Like seriously, it's only drywall. Drywall is so cheap, you can put it up, tear it down, put it up, tear it down, put it up, tear it down, put it up again for less money than your suspended ceiling. All right? So just go with drywall. Make it pretty. And don't worry about it. If you get a plumbing leak, you'll know your ceiling will stain. And then you can cut a little hole and fix the leak and then patch it and you're good again. All right. What is my take on subpar renovations going on lately? What do you mean lately? <laughs> They've been going on for, I don't know, how old is the planet? Okay, so specifically people looking, where did it go? Wow, for a flip and easy money with, yeah. What's my take on subpar renovations? You know, you, you can tell a, a low quality renovation by the finishes, right? Like there's no such thing as quality work and, and cheap finishes. Guys that take time to do a lot of work on, in the back behind the wall where you can't see um, are not even gonna in, invest in crap finishes and do really lousy finishing work. So for the most part, I think it's a misnomer that there's a lot of fly-by-nighters out there. If you're really worried about it, then I would say buy a house that uh, has been suffered from a hurricane and it's been ripped apart and then go and rebuild it yourself and you don't have to worry about it. You know, buy a fixer-upper. Don't buy a fixed-upper. That's probably the best options I have. Someone here, Devin, purchased a 1950s home with plaster walls and need to update electrical. Would you rip down or try to save? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, Devin, there's really only one question here. You want to rewire your whole house and it's a 1950s plaster job? You can patch and repair all the holes after all the drilling to run all the wiring yourself. And it's not a lot of work. The electrician's going to charge you, depending on the size of the home, 10, 20,000, who knows, right? You want to rip all that plaster off and start over again? You need all new plaster, all new ceilings, you need all new flooring because the walls are so thick, you're going to expose all the areas where the flooring isn't finished. Um, it's like a complete renovation of the entire home. So if you want to gut and rebuild the 1950s home, which wouldn't be a bad idea if you want to get proper insulation, depending where you live, then there's an investment there and it's worth it. But if you're gonna just update the electrical and just fish and patch, then go for it. You know, you can have that home completely rewired and patched and painted in just a couple weeks. Not a big deal. Don't be intimidated. Um, when posting links to the tools you use in the description section, could you put links for UK Euro as well if feasible? Okay, Roy. Um, no, it's not feasible. Uh, but what we do have is we have a website uh, and we're going to be posting links based on different countries for all of our affiliate links, okay? So yes, we will have a link for Amazon and we will be developing our European Amazon pages. So that should help a little bit um, just so that we can be of more service. Uh, how does one become a member? Well, it's pretty simple. There's a join button on the screen if you're on a computer. If you're on a phone, it may not be there. You can uh, go to the home screen and type in the search tool membership. There's a video and then there's a link in that description. There's also a link in the video description of every video we produce now. So you can just go scroll down the page, look in the link, it'll say join to become a member and there's a link, just click the link. It'll take you there and then you can use the button. There's a lot of different technology you can watch these videos on, so it's not always good. It's not always as simple as you'd like it to be, but we do have a link in every video description to become a member, and that would be awesome. The more members we have, the more we can do for our members. Sandy is in Sandy Rose. Sandy Rose has been with us since the beginning, since back before we knew what the heck we were doing. Now we know a little bit about what we're doing. <laughs> Sandy continually reminds us. All right. What's the best brand for floor tile? Really? 
<laughs> How does a guy answer that question? Uh, where do you live? Um, vinyl, laminate, ceramic, porcelain, natural stone? What kind of tile are we talking? Got to get a little more specific. And for branding, there is no such thing. Every brand that's out there seems to make good and poor quality of the same thing nowadays. It's absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, how long should I leave adhesive to dry on tile over tile before grouting? That all depends on the cement you use. There is a type of cement. It's, it's, it's got a T on it. Like uh, map high or mape or mape e, depending, you know, how you like to say it. Um, they make a product called Caraband, Carabond tea. And the, the tea, it really refers to a superior quality uh, mortar. Um, Schluter makes an uh, all set tea as well. A lot of companies do. The, the properties of the mortar will determine how fast you can grow. And they'll actually say that on the thin set bag that you use to mix. So read the instructions on the back of the bag. It'll tell you, is it two hours, six hours, 24, 48? All right. So it all depends. And it has to do with the size of the tile, the conditions of the home, all these kinds of things. Generally, as a rule, you can go with 12 hours, but that's generally. To be more specific, do you have a waterproofing membrane or not? Um, are your tiles large format tiles? You can wait longer. If you're not sure and none of that helped, just give it two days and you'll be fine. <laughs> how, how much of a hurry can you be in? You've already got tile, right? <laughs> so you, you tiled over tile. You can use the shower if you haven't grown it yet. It's not a big deal. Uh, is there a book available with all the codes for DIY project? Not yet. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, yes, that's it. Edward... Ask, remember to check out your neighborhood, look at what you like and don't like. I'm not sure I'm missing that whole thread there. New member, Devin. Welcome to the DIY crew, Devin. All right, Edith is a member. It's got a question here. Uh, nope, that was a comment. Good codes be in your location. You know, man, let's talk about building codes for just two seconds. There's a lot of questions. Hey, Sandy's giving a big shout out to Maximilian Musco. Such a cool name. I wish I had that name. But then that'd be Max and Max. That'd be confusing as hell, wouldn't it? Um, my opinion on Push Connect fittings is they're awesome. And one of these days they'll make them legal. All right, building codes. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as simple as I can. There is a list of um, prescribed building techniques that if followed, and in a successful completion of a building. It's been narrowed down to this is how we do things for two reasons. One is to provide some semblance of structure to the building industry. The second and the most important and the most relevant is that the city officials hire people who've taken a college course to be a code enforcement officer. Huh. These people are not engineers. They're wonderful, intelligent people, and they are trained how to um, recognize and enforce building codes. Okay? But if you do anything outside of the building code, they have no ability to say, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that'll work. Wow, you're a genius. Man, I love what you've done there. Nothing. They can only say, this is all I know. Horse with blinders, okay? That's all they know. Drives you nuts. When you build the deck, you go down to the city, they'll give you a piece of paper and say, here's three railing options that we have that are approved according to the code. All right? It's stupid. If you had a, a gigantic 500-year-old tree in your backyard and you pulled out your chainsaw and you cut a deck out of it, it would fail inspection, even if it was one solid piece of wood because it's not in the code to do that. Do you understand? So when you're dealing with codes and enforcement agents and cities and inspectors and understand that what they need is a stamp and the city can give a stamp as long as you've built it according to their little code books that they got all right everything outside of that you need a structural engineer now the good news is they're totally affordable and they're a lot less of a hassle to deal with than the city is in a lot of cases so if you want to do something creative 
get a structural engineer and have a conversation with them and he'll design something that he'll put his stamp on and then the city will just go, oh, you got a stamp, fair enough, moving on. They don't care what you build as long as you have someone else say they're responsible for the idea. Ta-da! All right, hopefully that helps. I'm trying to be polite, but uh, cities can be frustrating because they have very narrow parameters to deal with and they're changing on a regular basis. Uh, like for instance, in our province, our electrical code is getting so refined. We actually, um, it's an unfortunate situation. We had somebody that uh, from, died actually from their, did their own in-floor heating system and they weren't electrocuted. They had a seizure and fell on the floor and they installed the sensor wrong and the thermostat also malfunctioned. And so it continued to heat the floor and basically cooked this person who had fallen on the floor and couldn't get up and notify anybody that they needed help. And as a result, everywhere in Ontario now needs to have all of our in-floor heating inspected before we close up. It's an extra step. That kind of thinking is really, to me, it's a little bit scary. It's like saying, oops, somebody had a car accident, take all the cars off the road. That's really where we're going with it. And it drives me a little nutty. I'm not that much of a fan of that much extensive oversight. I think our code officials would be much better suited if we did new home construction. Uh, like in our area, there's 13 major phases of construction and they only ever really inspect three. Let's bump that up maybe to four or five, you know, some of the important stuff. And uh, stop using inspectors on stupid things. But anyway, that's just me. Uh, no, 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 no. Wow, there's so much conversation going on here. We should just leave this going forever. Um, liberals love to regulate. That's how they get union donor dollars. I don't know if it has anything to do with political stripe. I think there's a lot of people that would like to see um, bad things not happen to people. And I think there's just a place where you cross the line for it costs too much to prevent. You know, there's money could be used somewhere else that may be more beneficial. Like for instance, Okay, I'm going to say it. Like, I'm pissed, okay? In Ontario, we have what they call free health care. But if you have a child with autism issues and you're on the spectrum, you can't get any help for your kid because there's no money. Really? Can somebody please, like, uh, give somebody a slap in the head with a big wet fish? Tell them to smirten up. My God. I mean, of all the things in the world that we spend money on, we don't have money for our own kids. Ugh, drives me nuts. You know, how many countless people who are retired that used to work for the province making pretty good salaries because your government, you know, employees go and get new hips and knee replacements free of charge, but we got no money for our kids. Hey, I'm just saying. Maybe we got our uh, shit out of whack a little bit. Did I just drop an S-bomb? How about that? Get a little worked up. Maybe that'll happen. All right, moving on before I get kicked off the internet. Um, <laughs> what happens at 8 o'clock? Yes, the, uh, the new video will be released at 8 o'clock. You know what? I'm, I'm going to check this out. I haven't even looked for a while. It's been two days since I even looked. I want to know how many subscribers we're at because I think it might be fun to find out. I don't have any idea. So now listen, for let's talk show. about... <laughs> ah, look how prepared I am, eh? Aren't you proud of me? All right. Um, <laughs> the new channel. How to be on it. What? You can be on it? Yeah, you can get on it. We'll, uh, we'll deal with that in a second. I got to check to see our subscriber count, though. I'm really curious. <laughs> this is not working as fast as I like it. You know, I often said years ago, I would not get on a computer until it could work faster than I can. But point and click makes it kind of hard to keep up, doesn't it? Switch account. There we go. Oh, I don't have it on here. Gosh, darn it. That just, that's irritating. Okay. I'll find it for you. You know, like one of these days, I do not have to learn how to use a computer. Just under 10. How much under 10,000 are we? 50. 50 people? Seriously? Kids, it's 10 after 7. We need 50 subscribers to the new channel. And then I'll eat my hat. 
All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I got to get back to the word here. Yes. New channel, how to be on it. Oh my God. So here's the deal. We have a whole series of videos called Reality Renovision. And Max has been diligently pouring his soul into these things for the last few years. They take a lot of time and energy. And for whatever reason, maybe, maybe it's just us, but we don't think that they've gotten enough respect on YouTube as they should have. Is that fair enough to say that? Respect is maybe a good word. View time. People like them. But what it is, it's, it's a combination of mixed audience. So we have a lot of people that watch our show and they want to learn how to build stuff. And then we have these story-based episodes and saying that's not really their jam. And so then when YouTube releases a video, you know they're very secretive about it. They don't, they don't say, well, this guy's got 700,000 subscribers. We'll, we'll invite 700,000 people to watch it. They give it to a handful of people to see the reaction first. And then they decide if they're going to show more and show more. Because if you haven't hit the bell for notifications, you're not told when our videos come out. It's just the way it works. Unless, unless enough people who have the bell rung watch it and like it and interact, give enough signal to YouTube that it's a good video, then they'll share it with the world. So the reality renovation episodes don't get that kind of response. So a lot of people on here want to learn how to lay flooring and do paint and tile, and I get it. That's why we're here. But for everybody else who loves those episodes, who doesn't have the bell rung for notifications, they don't even know they came out and they never get you know, told about it. So we thought we're going to do a new channel. We'll take that whole audience, give them an opportunity to move to a new location to see all those episodes. And hopefully YouTube will take that experience, which should be a positive one, and share it with even more people who can then find out that they can get help doing their renovations. Seemed kind of logical to me at the time. Anyway, um, no bell, but I have a list of every new video. Well, that's cool. And I'm not going to try to tell you you have to hit a bell or you got to watch every video. It's just, uh, it's all a numbers game and there's a whole algorithm thing and I get it. So what we're doing is we're doing that. Now, because it's a new channel, we want to raise our bar and do things a little differently. And because I'm getting old and I don't like the winter, I'm planning on doing some traveling to the south. And so we are taking a look at opportunities next year for filming and going on the road and talking to a lot of you guys at your home on your project, hopefully doing some consultations, getting some before and after pictures. And we'll talk about that later. But uh, yeah, that's the direction we're moving. You know, it's good to have a plan. Anyway, um, can I do tutorials on staining exterior furniture like benches? Don't look like a guy who sits on a bench. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> am I that old already? I still have some hair left. All right, uh, here we go. Uh, is there a link to the new channel, Nancy Hightower? That's a good question. Hey, Michelle, I know you're watching. Uh, let's make sure Jeff eats his hat, yeah. But can you throw up the link to the new channel so people can go subscribe to it? That would be awesome. Love you, honey. Um, there it is. Boom. Yeah. Look at that girl. She's on fire, man. I'm telling you. She's an administrative assistant. Got gifts. Freaking love her. Film in Clearwater. See, now we're talking, right? I got all these people from like the, the northern states asking me to come film at their house. How come no one in the south wants me there? I mean, I'm, I'm open to getting some sunshine. Uh, your take on opening up exterior wall to extend a kitchen outwards in Vancouver. My take is that uh, changing the footprint of your house is always a big endeavor. It's going to be costly, but if that means it's the only way that you can get a big, gorgeous kitchen that everybody's going to be jealous of, then you're probably going to get a good return on investment. If you're paying someone else to do it, though, um, you might break even. I know the housing market out there is really up at the moment, so you probably would do okay with that. So a lot of places in the world, though, doing major renovation like that is not a good return on investment. But Vancouver, L.A., New York, uh, certain areas in Toronto. Um, there are other places, like I'm sure Miami is probably a good place to get a renovation like that done. But for the rest of us that live in the real world, you're making us jealous even mentioning the fact that you live in Vancouver. Okay. 
Come on down south to Atlanta. I'm planning on it, John. I'm actually looking forward to it. I, you know, we've been so busy with this renovation. I have yet to release the tour dates. I've got to get on that. Oh, don't let me off the hook, guys. Put on some pressure. Throw in the comment section of this video. Tell me where you want to be. I'm going to make that list real soon. We finally got our new website up. Um, I got a tutorial on how to add all the information. I have it written down. I just have not made it public yet. And I really got to take some time to do that. Or I'm going to get in so much trouble. Holy cow. Over 10, Michelle is on the ball. Yes, she is. Chris here, remember, says I have a plaster walls and when I did a patch on the wall with drywall, it came out smooth and looked great. But the plaster wall had some texture. How can I replicate that texture? Ah, see now you know all the pain that I'm living in. So that plaster wall actually isn't the part of the texture. The texture is from all the years and years and years of paint. <laughs> The only way you can properly blend plaster and drywall together is to skim coat the whole surface wall to wall floor to ceiling. Do the patch and then do a level five, skim coat the whole thing, sand it, and then it'll be perfect. Um, or you can paint with a, oh, can't remember the name of that paint. Is that Lowe's? Lowe's has a paint that's designed to go on their textured water resistant drywall for wet areas like a basement and it's got so many solids and it's so thick that it actually flattens out all the bumps that's on that texture and that would probably work i'm not up to speed with that product but i know it exists so go talk to the guys at the, the pro department at lowe's and say what primer do you use on your special drywall for basement wet areas and they'll tell you that'll probably work we should try that let's do that do I have any plaster walls left in my house? No. Not even one? <laughs> I don't know. Crap. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to find somebody in our community who has a plaster wall so I can come paint a wall at your house and then we'll try that out and then see how that works. Yeah. Hey, somebody just gave us another tip. That's so nice. I'm loving that. I think Max, we're gonna, we got enough now we can all go grab a beer after work. All right, that's so cool. Um, you channeled over 10,000. I, it's over 10,000? There you go. Yeah. Holy crap. Really? Already? Yeah. All we did was say, hey, you guys are awesome. I don't know if that's a record or anything, but I'm pretty damn impressed, to be honest with you. Now, all we have to do is have 10,000 people watch that video tonight, which you may or may not have seen, but it's going to have some new stuff. That was going to say, the new channel, we have a lot of content that we're remastering. Is that a good word? Yeah. Um, the first couple... We couldn't do anything about the music, sorry. It might be old school irritating, but show us some love and leave the darn video running anyway so that YouTube thinks you watched the whole thing. <laughs> and then they can suggest it to a new audience and they're gonna fall in love with it just like you did. Now, the deal is this, uh, moving forward, everything's been updated to Epidemic Sound and we're filming new stuff in different styles. So we're gonna get through all the old content first. Sometime in the spring or summer next year, we'll be doing all the new video releases. It'll be a lot of fun. But I know this, looking at the view numbers on those videos, majority of you people in the audience have not seen any of them. So you're in for a treat. Um, they're a lot of fun and you can still learn some great stuff in them. And Cindy, thank you so much, Cindy. That was really appreciated. Very nice of you to do that. Whoop, whoop, is that how you say that? What is new channel? New oh, episodes wow. every two weeks. Yeah, so the new channel has got new episodes of renovation projects that we did. They're project renovation videos. And they're not HDTV style, God help us all. If I see another freaking sledgehammer, I'm uh... Anyway, two weeks. Every two weeks we're going to release another remastered video until we're caught up to date. And then we'll start releasing the new ones. Look past the music. That's right. You got the right attitude there, Janine. Appreciate that. Um... Wishing you lots of success for the new channel. Oh, we just got wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We got $10, is that Super Chat? That's what they're called. I'm kind of new to this stuff. I don't really understand it all. That's pretty cool. Oh, and, and a little bit of love in the message there too. Well, listen, Al Harvey, IFI, IFY? Yeah, maybe I should get glasses. I know I'm half deaf, but maybe I'm going half blind too. I can't read either. Ah. Oh. Here we go. Look at all the emojis and stuff. There's like, 
little half-eaten gumdrop yellow people everywhere. <laughs> Any advice on creaking stairs? Yeah, um, if you sneak in through the window, they won't hear you. Um, <laughs> uh, creaking stairs is basically old staircases that were assembled with nails and not screws. So if you screw everything together, if you have, from the underside, if you can, so you don't have to do any repairs, that's great. Um, if you can't do it from the underside, then just screw them together, the risers and the treads, okay? And then the wood will stop separating and coming back together under the weight, the deflection, because that noise is actually wood rubbing up against the nail that's got loose. That's all it is. And you will be fine. Uh, and another old carpenter trick I heard of a long time ago is uh, wash your steps with soapy water and the wood will soak up the water and it will expand again and it'll bond to that nail a lot better. I know that almost sounds like a crazy witchcraft idea, but it works. Um, bum, 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 bum. Wow, blah, blah, blah. I can't read this fast. I'm blowing my mind. Would it be a mistake to do drainage tiles myself or is it really as simple as it seems? Um, yeah, if you've already got a hole dug, drainage tile is easy. It's just a pipe, collects water and runs it somewhere. Um, make sure it goes downhill. There's a lot of ways to do that. It's not that bad. If you sneak in the window, <laughs> you a creeper. <laughs> not if it's your own window. All right, story time. That's right, Michelle. You know what I'm gonna say. When we first started dating, I used to have to climb up the side of the wall and climb in her window to hang out with her because you know her parents didn't want me over at night. So I used to break into my own wife's house daily. We got married, it's okay. Very young, very premature. The whole story works together in that fashion. Uh, yes, we were 18. Um, bum, bum, bum. How long have I been on YouTube? I don't know, let's see. About an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, since April of 2016. Max knows, because he was uploading. Um, Jordan Shepard, Jeff loves beer. <laughs> uh, any opinion on the Max four-piece bathroom shower kit? I no. Um, if you're talking about the acrylic wall panel system, so you got a shower base and then three wall panels, yeah, they work great. Just make sure that uh, you use the right adhesive to seal everything together because silicone doesn't work with a darn on that stuff. Don't buy into that lie. Um, and if the joints are stuck together properly, you won't get too much moisture going to the wallboard behind it, which in most cases, people are cheating and using drywall and that will end up going moldy and all your caulking joints will be moldy too. Big surprise there. But if you do it right, those things can last for like ever, right? Nothing wrong with it. The truth is out there now. Oh boy. Um, fine. There's the bald head. Now you see it. No one paid me to wear the hat. I don't have to keep it on. It's all good. Love my freedom. Uh, if I have an off-center light fixture on the wall above my sink, can you extend the electrical to center the light? You know, Jackie, that's a damn good question. Bum, bum, bum. I'm going to get very draw-like now. Ah, I think I just sliced my wrist open. No, just a scratch. All right. Um, so here's our bathroom wall and our vanity sink, right? Center line. There should be the center of your light fixture right here on that center line. Sometimes what will happen is somebody has been drinking too much the night before, puts it off center. Now, there are two reasons for that. One is there might be a stud on that center line and they attached an electrical box next to the stud and they mounted your light on that. And the light has got predetermined locations for that fixture. But if you have one of these, does this look familiar yet? Little light bars and it's a long rectangle. Generally speaking, there's a face plate and a back plate. And the back plate will look like this. There'll be a little hole and a grommet. And the wire is coming through the wall in the grommet. And that means that there's been thrown a screw there and they've thrown a screw there and they've stuck it on the wall in the wrong spot. A lot of bathroom vanities, you're allowed to run the, just the wire to the fixture. It doesn't have to go to the octagon box. So if that's the case, 
you'll see on your face plate, you'll have two little set screw knobby things. All right, take those off, peel the light fixture off. If you see a wire coming through the box plate like this, then you can just undo your screws, slide your plate over, reattach it, Bob's your uncle. All right, problem solved. Look at that, we're solving problems. All of humanity's problems solved right here, folks. All right, ah, uh, bum, bum, bum. Should I, I missed that. Do, 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 something about linking a channel. I don't know, did I miss that? Something, about, should I link my channel and my channel, channel linking? Anything you can do to help promote, I will appreciate it, right? Because at the end of the day, this channel is not about, you know, Max and I and our success. It's about helping you guys out. I just call me Canadian, but I figure if we help enough people, we might be able to make a living doing it. Um, love from Nepal. Wow. That laugh of yours is unique in its own way, and it feels like I'm attending some interesting university lecture. <laughs> unique in its own way. Creepy or? Yeah. Uh, okay. No Bob Ross is your uncle. Yes, and it was such a sad day when he passed. And he took his hair with him. None. I got none of it. Can I use a threaded brass pipe for drop to tub spout from valve? Chances are your valve is not going to accept the thread. Interesting. Okay, his manufacturer says no pecs due to back pressure. A lot of valves have that. So your valve doesn't have a positive stop to control to say tub spout or this or that. So yeah, in a lot of cases you can't use pecs to go to the tub spout. It's, you just use regular copper and you'd solder it in, not a threaded brass pipe. Okay, so solder copper to the drop ear and then you're fine. Then you can use the threaded rod going up to the tub. Yes. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Ho, Gustavo. We got a super chat from Gustavo. He has a question. Going to go up and get it. I have to. Quick chase. Have you ever used or heard of GoBoard tile backer made by John Manville? Hmm. Any feedback would be great. Uh, keep up the great work. I watch all your videos, especially when I'm stuck during a project. <laughs> so you watch them all the time then. <laughs> all right. Dude, uh, first of all, let me just say, um, John's Manville is a great company. They're head of the class construction technology. And I've heard good things about GoBoard. I personally have not used it yet. But from my understanding, it is a really competitive product. I just don't know about the pricing. Um, I wouldn't know how to put that in a comparison between cement board, go board, and let's say Schluter board. I'm not sure where they'd land on, this, on the scale. But uh, if you know the cost of go board versus Schluter board, somebody throw that in there. Let's find out. Because almost everything in the world is going to be, um, it's going to have a certain level of permeability. So water's going to travel through unless it's glass or steel. So even curdy board, which is vapor proof, it's almost vapor proof. It's so almost vapor proof, it's not worth talking about, but I'm not sure where go board is on that scale. Like if you were to take drywall, waterproof drywall, um, cement board, Schluter board, right? That makes sense way up there. I don't know where go board is probably between cement and curdy. Maybe it's as good as curdy. I have no idea. That's a great question. I should check out that product. Give me two seconds. I'm going to make a note. Go board. I just, I feel ignorant when I don't know what's going on with the products out there. I like to check it out. All right. Um, bum, bum, bum. I have to bring my wife to Arkansas too. Okay, Cindy. Good plan. Yes. I'm going to travel with my wife because I love hanging out with her. It's an honor and a pleasure. So I'm going to drag her everywhere I go. Uh, if you could build a massive dome to keep the rain out, it'd be great. Or I'll just stay in my house. That works too. Why is he starting a new channel? Another one. Not, we're not replacing this one. Like, let's just be clear in case some of you are getting discouraged and you know, doing unspeakable things, we're not going away. We're going to continue to make DIY how-to videos. As a matter of fact, we've just finished filming about another 14 or 15 in the last few weeks. So we got tons of good content coming. 
We're just uh, going to do the how-to on one channel and the who, what, why, where, when on the other channel. Okay? Does that make any sense? Hey, absolutely love the show. You're the man. Keep doing what you do. Hey, absolutely love the show. You're the man. Keep doing what you do. Hey, absolutely... <laughs> Can't do that all night long, that'd be irritating. What's the point of this channel? I have no idea, Bruce, but uh, you know. <laughs> Are you still doing home improvements? Yes, I'm still working on my own house. I'm gonna be working on my own house next year as well. And when I'm done, I'm gonna buy another house and I'm gonna work on that one. And I'm gonna keep on going and going and going and going until they put me in a box. Uh, what would you use as a backer for a shower niche on an exterior wall, moderate climate? I don't care what the climate is, um, I would use something like Schluter board. And if you can't afford a Schluter board, then go cement board, but make sure you use a waterproofing membrane um, and you too will be fine. The secret with the uh, waterproofing systems and exterior walls is the expansion contraction from the climate. So you gotta have a way to have that flexibility. And that's one of the things that Schluter provides because their membrane that they put in the corner to join the walls um, will we'll, we'll expand and contract with it, and so it solves all that problem. It's got a lot of flexibility. Uh, oh, so ChocolateRx is answering the question, what the heck the channel is for? That's awesome. That is a lot of home emojis, Prophetess Fry. Oh, wow. Um. <laughs> so a lot of people have been asking what the difference is between the channels. Uh, I think we should add that. <laughs> The videos One are second. Somebody different. comments here. Jeff's going to renovate his pine box. <laughs> I freaking love it. That's a great idea. I should renovate my own coffin before I die. That'd be great. I could pimp that sucker out. That'd be a lot of fun. All right, go ahead, Max. Sorry to cut you off there. I had to read that. For no worries, part. buddy. Hey, he's got to get his jokes and he's got his stand up. You just got to go through them. Got to do it. <laughs> All right, so the new channel. Uh, on this channel, every video is, well, not every video, a lot of our videos are on the same project. We're on them for several months. The other channel, every video is a different project, so it's not the same one. Right. That is true. That's a big difference. So every time you watch a video on the new channel, it'll be a different project, which is exciting. So you don't get, like, bored watching me renovate a bathroom for three months, or in the case of some channels, six or eight. Um, Nancy Hightower says renovate a mobile home. Yeah, why not? That sounds like a great idea. And then I can put it somewhere and stick my mother-in-law in it. <laughs> this guy's okay, he answered my question. Well, if that's all I gotta do to be okay, I mean, that's, that's awesome, I'll take it. Um, do you know Sam the cooking guy? I don't know anybody. I do nothing but renovate and answer questions. I have no social life anymore. Um, we have to plan to go out for dinner just because it's important to invest in our relationship. Other than that, now, you know who I do know? I know, um, I know a couple people from Florida who are coming up to Ottawa in a few weeks and we're going to do a video and install a really cool product that you're going to absolutely love. And uh, I'm not letting the cat out of the bag on that one, but I know them. They reached out to us. We went down and visited and we had a fun time with our friends in Florida. So only friends now. Just Max and Jess and our friends in Florida. That's all the time I have. <laughs> uh, have I ever heard of the Weedy system? Yeah. Um, Steve says it's better than even Schluter. In my opinion, you should do some research on it. Lots of options on how to use it and what instances. Hmm. Here's what I know about Weedy. It's basically the same damn thing. It's a board that's waterproof that you stick together and make custom showers with. Um, the difference is, is they rely on a caulking and not an overlap, an overlay system, which to me, um, I like be able to physically see the fact that I've got a two inch overlay on each side of my joint so that I can actually know that I have a seal. Where the caulking, man, all that takes is one little air bubble and you've got a leak. Uh, bottom line, I'm sure Weedy's a fine product. I have never really looked into it and because in my world um, I'm looking for cost-effective design options and to me Weedy was just priced right out of the market. It's almost twice as much as Schluter and I don't think any shower really needs that kind of investment unless you're in a market where spending that kind of money on the guts of your shower is that important? 
I think most people just want to have a shower. They're going to have a shower in. It's not going to get moldy and it's going to last a while. And so uh, I'm going to focus on that market and I'll let Weedy deal with all the millionaires. That's fine. Uh, is the new channel meant to explore commercial opportunities that may benefit viewers? Commercial opportunities. No. Everything I do is meant to explore commercial opportunities that will uh, uh, be an advantage to the viewer. Um, we are looking at taking over the world. So that's the plan, um, without a doubt. If, if I can deliver products and services to our viewers uh, at 30 to 50% off myself, instead of making you uh, jump through hoops to get all that deal, then that's what our goal is. Don't ask me how we're gonna get that done. I'm still working on it, but I think it's possible. Um, cement fiberboard is fine. Sure it is, yeah, there's lots of fine. There's, a, there's, there's, there's okay, there's code, there's fine, there's good, there's great, there's awesome, there's Schluter, there's Weedy, there's whatever. Um, if you come to Texas, I'd like to get your opinion on my 84 mobile home reno. Cool, but I'll tell you a secret. When I'm traveling, I'm going to be um, reaching out to our members. And I'm going to say, hey, members, I'm going to be in, let's call it... Uh, well, I don't know, I'll pick any random, Minneapolis. Yeah, shout out to Minneapolis. If you're a member and I'm in Minneapolis and I'm gonna be doing a, talk, a speaking engagement there, then I'm gonna shout out to the members and find out if anybody's doing a renovation project and I'll take time to uh, you know, randomly select a, a winner or whatever and we'll go and visit. Um, but I can't just answer everybody's requests to come, but we do plan on coming to visit with our members as much as humanly possible I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, even if all we can do is Instagram posts, I still like to come and see what you guys are up to. Because watching and, and seeing what you've done with our advice is gonna be critical to help me to know how to educate better in the future. So, um, it, like when I come and visit Max and he's done his renovations, you know, uh, it's nice, it's good. It's like, okay, I learned. And this, I could have should have taught this, I should have, I could have showed him this, you know, so then we get better at it. And uh, the more I learn what's happening out there based on our advice, the more I can adjust our teaching to make sure that, I mean, let's face it, there's thousands of little elements that I don't always share. And I think part of it is because I'm doing it so many years, you forget that that's something needs to be taught and it's not just normal. So I got to find out all these little things that aren't normal that I need to share. Coming to Vancouver, question mark? I don't know, does it still cost $5,000 to fly there? Holy cow. Like seriously, I mean, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. Our plan actually is to use uh, the United States regional airport system. So it's like a couple hundred bucks everywhere I go. So I don't have to charge an arm and a leg to come and visit. Uh, so if we get out into the Seattle area and can justify getting up to Vancouver, then I'd love to be there but I really don't know if that's gonna be doable. But I've never been, and I would love to see the place. If for no other reason, maybe take a few days off for a vacation. But yeah, we will see. Aurora, I mean, I'm just trying to be honest here, right? I'm not gonna blow sunshine at anyone's backside. Um, Sandy Road, South Carolina, I need a new kitchen in my mobile home. Bring everyone. <laughs> Are you cooking? <laughs> Sandy, we are going to have to come and see you because unlike a lot of people who are members and commenting on our site, Sandy has been here since the beginning and has been giving us constructive criticism and the occasional spanking and has been an absolute delight to have on the channel. And I am going to be in South Carolina area and will make sure that I come by and give you a great big hug. And I don't know if I have time to renovate a kitchen while I'm giving you that hug, but we will see what we can do to help you out. Um, oh. Let me see, boom, 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 boom. Do I have an apparel shop? I need some home renovation swag. Yeah, no. Um, here's the thing. We tried setting up a Teespring and making some shirts and stuff available. And then we ordered it ourselves and it came back in Yiddish or something. I don't know what happened. The, the, everything was in the wrong spot. It came in three different deliveries. Uh, one thing never showed up at all. And we just went, well, that didn't work very well. Last thing we want to do is have uh, another job answering questions of where's my shirt. So we put that on the shelf until we could figure out how to do it well. 
and not that there's anything wrong with Yiddish. It's just, you understand what I'm saying? The printing was just a disaster. Sorry, Teespring, if you don't like what I just said, but it's what happened. Deal with it. Um, yeah, so, <sighs> Peril Shop, I don't know. I, I would like to say that someday soon we'd be able to do something. I just, you know, I mean, if you need a shirt, go buy a shirt. You know, I mean, if you want a free shirt, go to a Schluter course. They'll give you a free shirt. <laughs> uh, uh, we will try. We will try to get something, you know. It's not because it's going to be this great big adventure where we can make a lot of money. Uh, it's just because we'd like to have something that people could say, hey, you know, represent. You know, we support this channel and we like this guy or whatever. That'd be fun. But we've got to be able to do it well so that when you get... Um, if you got a shirt and it says that uh, I D I Y on it, right? You don't want to say I D I and then the Y is on the back. That just doesn't work, right? Well, actually, maybe that's a good idea for a shirt, Max. That could be interesting. Yeah, why? I don't know. All right. Bunker branding for merch. Okay, yeah, you know what? If you have experience, throw it in there. I'd love to know. I'm going to do some research. What will we do now that Calmart service is shutting down? Rob and I have no idea. I just found out today. All right, I'm still in mourning over here. I'll need some time to digest, and then we will sort that out. Um, whatever it is, uh, it will be phenomenal, and it'll be the best damn membership offer that's out there because nobody cares about the members the way that we do. I'll tell you that right now. Um, okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. My bank account hates you now that I got into watching your channel. Oh, because you're renovating everything you see. I get it. <laughs> okay. Well, sell your house, replenish your bank account with all the money you make and all your DIYs, and then it won't hate you anymore. Um, what's the largest plumbing project you've ever done? Okay. Well, like for instance, the house I bought didn't have venting. <laughs> Every time you flush the toilet, it went and uh, yeah. So I, I did all the vent and all the plumbing in my current house, all the plumbing, waste, water supply, hot water tank, air, water filtration. I mean, that's probably the biggest one I've did. Did the whole damn house. Uh, well, come to Quebec, fully renovated house to invite you in. All right, Kurt. Mark, I would love to come to Quebec. I think we're going to come for a trip up there, uh, part of the tour for sure. Um, Quebec's a great big destination, but I think somewhere outside of Montreal would make sense in maybe one of the suburbs out there. Uh, we can grab some cheese while we're up. And uh, other than that, we'll probably... Uh-oh. In morning. Well, it happens, you know. Calmart. What's Calmart? Calmart? Calmart is an app I use with our members so they can call me, right? And I don't actually give you my actual phone number because I don't want anybody having this number. The only people that call me on this phone are my family and Max. And I like it that way because it hardly ever rings. That's what a phone is supposed to do. Stay silent. Um, Call Mart is over at the end of the month. We got a few weeks to figure this out, so let's not panic. In the meantime, I'll continue to use the app and help people as much as I can, and we will look at solutions, and we will find one I am sure that will be beneficial. Uh, okay, let's see. Do I think woodworking is a good education for building renovation? Mm, actually, no. Woodworking is a good, um, good education for finishing construction, but most levels of construction aren't, uh, aren't performed with the same level of precision as woodworking. And so you'll end up spending a lot of time making things perfect by nature that you don't need to. And so it'll really slow you down. I know a lot of guys who um, got incredibly um, uh, attention to detail, finish skills, and then they go and do drywall, right? And it'll take them months to hang the drywall in their house because it's got to be just perfect. Everything is rasped and shaved and every amount of dust is accounted for. And it's just ridiculous. It's drywall, man. Like, get that sucker up in five seconds and get some mud on it. But, you know, you can get into this mentality of build it perfect and it's perfect, but it's just not true. Build it perfect and you've wasted all that time. Uh, what length galvanized nipple do I use for a tub spout? 
Um, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, nipples on the show tonight. I'm not sure what's going on, but, um, uh, <laughs> long enough for the tub spout. The secret here is to have the tub spout handy so you know what kind of assembly it is. Is it threaded? Is it just pipe and then you tighten the screw on? Uh, there's different options. So you want to work in reverse order. You want to look at your finished fixture and then get the pipe sorted out accordingly. Okay. Uh, Saguenay, best curd. There we go. Wow. Okay. Loving that. Oh, 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 oh. You recommend hot water recirculating pumps? Sure. If you have a house with more than one unit, definitely. Um, if you live in a 5,000 square foot mansion, you're on the wrong channel. Um, planning to make a new bathroom in the attic. No plumbing currently. Maybe a skylight. Any insights? There's a reason they call it an attic. <laughs> uh, depending where you live, it may or may not be a good idea. The uh, attic serves a function in the house. It's not just dead space so you can put a roof up. So be careful. Make sure you're talking to somebody who helps you understand the building uh, technology and strategy of that home before you go building things in an attic. It's not like... Well, it is kind of like a basement. You can't just build in a basement and expect perfection. Um, basements weren't designed to be finished and neither were attics, so be careful with that one. That may or may not be a good idea. Uh, the fr oh, you spelled it wrong. See, Mark, come on. <laughs> you, my French is good enough to know you spelled fromagerie wrong. You didn't put the R in, bud. Dude, look at that. Jeff knows French. Just know enough to know that I don't know it. Um, Ashton Kutcher has a similar CalMart app for celebs. That's who's been calling me. Now I, okay, now it all makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, bunker branding. Okay, this is a few times I've heard bunker branding. Michelle, note to self, let's check out bunker branding. Maybe we can uh, make some shirts available for some folks who would like to wear a shirt. Or a coffee mug at the office, right? Huh? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. All right. Jeff, I need you to have a word with my husband. Snow flies and I have no walls in my bathroom. Is that a type of fly or are you living somewhere where it's actually snowing right now? I'm confused. You have no walls in your bathroom? I think that becomes a hall, doesn't it? I'm not sure how that works. Uh, happy to talk to your husband. Um, you know, the app's good for another few weeks there, so have him give me a call. Uh, I gotta sort him out. <laughs> uh, love from Ireland, bro. Hey, love to Ireland. Back at you. Haven't been there. Can't wait to visit. One of the things we want to do, um, stay humble. You're a good dude. Oh, nah, it's probably not going to happen. I'm going to become a complete jerk. When I get another 10,000 subscribers, you watch. I'm sure it'll happen. I have four kids and a Hungarian wife. If I'm not humble, I'm buried. They will not let that happen. Trust me on that one. Um, yeah, humble. Humility is a funny thing. You know, you go through enough crap in life and it's easy to stay uh, grounded. Uh, my story is not one of starting at the top and then reaching down. Uh, my story is one of uh, starting at the bottom and, and fighting my way up. Recently, I've uh, got to the surface and been able to take a deep breath. It's been nice. You know, far from worrying about humility. Oh my God. All right. How to avoid larger bath breaking floor joists. Don't buy really lousy floor joists. Um, here's the thing. There is no such thing in the building code as certain floor joists for bathrooms. Because there's no such thing as bathrooms that can carry enough weight that'll be an issue with the floor joists. The only time we get into uh, re-engineering the floor joist package of a house is if you're putting in a grand piano. Just saying. Um, not an issue. If you have an issue with breaking the floor joist by filling up the tub, that's really quite an issue. Uh, dear Lord. <laughs> Has that ever happened? Is that a thing? Anybody ever had their floor break out underneath the tub? Wow, that's interesting. Man, the comments are just so fast. How do you keep up? Uh, ba -ba 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 okay. Um, hey, Bulgaria watching. Wow. 
Europe is watching. Why are you people watching? It must be two o'clock in the morning where you are. <laughs> Nothing better to do, eh? That's amazing. Don't they have infomercials on TV where you're from? That's amazing. Okay. Uh, uh, sm uh, small family in Ireland, bro. Mom's cousin had 13 kids. Yep. Yep. That's a good sized family. Man, I would have loved that. I don't know how the heck I would ever afford them, but I would have loved it. Um, oh, wow. W wow. What is my origins? My mother. It's pretty much where I come from. Uh, my brother lost a lung from his best dosis. That's not even a thing. Five years ago. He's very lucky to survive. He worked in the sawmills for many years. With a, see, there you go. It's got everything to do with your job, right? Whatever you do for a living will kill you, folks. Big surprise. I'd like to see septic tank upgrades. Me too, because I need one. Trust me. Um, can I do a video on thermostats? Okay. No. Um, we'll incorporate thermostat information in a video, but I will not do a whole video on thermostats. I don't think it's that exciting of a topic. But uh, uh, if you... Not sure how to wire a thermostat. I'm sure you can Google that. And there's got to be someone out there who does three-minute videos that can help you out. It's not hard. It's just two wires. Uh, just got my shower panel today. Look nice. Cool. Um, old bathrooms had concrete floors and second floors. Yeah. That's because old bathrooms used to tile with a traditional tiling method where they had to have... Um, about an inch and a half of dry pack or concrete or cement before they put the tile on. Uh, back in the day, late 50s, early 60s, they invented thin set cement, changed the whole world. And ever since they invented that, they've been trying to get the industry standards back up to where they perform to expectations. Recently, we've got there, but everything for the last 60 years has been a nightmare as far as construction consistency. I don't know why they mess with it so much, but. Okay, here we go. Yeah, my mom's old house had an issue. Thick concrete mud floor under the tile. New large whirlpool has doubled up floor joists under it. Oh, there you go. Uh, so there might be an issue. Look at that. Um, didn't work. I got like rings. I'm not sure what that means. I'm missing that conversation. Um, how I become a member, go to the uh, description of any video and there'll be a link there to become a member. You push that button, don't copy and paste, it doesn't work. Click the link, all right? And then uh, once you're there, you will uh, be part of the DIY crew and have access to all those wonderful benefits, one of which is about to run out, so do it soon. <laughs> all right, um, wow. What time is the max? Do we have an idea where we are? 10 minutes left. 10 minutes, folks. Now's the time. We got 10 minutes left. Right? We got 10 minutes left. Wait a minute. Did I just see that? Hey, baby. <laughs> Everybody, Chris Thor is my daughter. Aw. And she threw out a hi, Dad. Aw. Big five second hug. Ah, oh, right for you. Yeah, that's my girl. She was my first. And man, I feel way too young to have a daughter who owns her own house. Okay. Oh, can you put a ledger board on top of stucco? If the stucco on the outside of the house is already done. No, don't be nuts. Uh, you can't put structure on facade. You got to put structure on structure. Okay. That's uh, really simple. Uh, ledge board deck kind of figured, but no, don't do it. All right, cut your stucco, put in the ledge board, work on some sort of a water deflection system for when it rains to keep the water away from your foundation. Happy Halloween, Jeff. <laughs> I'm not much of a Halloween fan. Um, yeah, it's not usually nice weather where we're from, so it's not a lot of fun. Like yesterday, it was cold, windy, and rainy, and the kids all stayed home because. Well, kids today, eh? They, they don't know how to have fun in the rain. Uh, Sandy's shouting out to my daughter. Oh, okay. 
Uh, when changing electrical outlets or light switches, do you have to connect red versus black in any order? No. No order. You know? It's all good. As long as the power's out, it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, how did you got to where you at to be that good? Tell us about you. All right. Come from my mother, as I mentioned earlier. Um, grew up in a small town of about 50, 60,000 people. Half of uh, half the people that lived there were Portuguese, so they spoke Portuguese, and we lived in a really small town as a result of that. Um, got married when I was 19 to my 18-year-old girlfriend at the time, because uh, if she was already my wife, we wouldn't have been married. And then we had four babies, and as a result of that, uh, getting married young and having kids right away, yeah, I kind of left a little on the outside in the social sphere, if you know what I mean. Um, nobody wants to bet on a horse that looks a little lame, right? So we were basically on our own, and uh, we both had very small families that were, uh, how shall we say, it, normal, which means completely dysfunctional. And um, we struggled, like most young people, trying to make a living. And Busted our asses our entire life to raise that family so that they would be normal. Um, did okay at it. Hopefully we didn't scar anybody too bad for life. Um, worked two jobs for most of my life. Uh, especially the early years, you know. Uh, whenever, wow, if I was awake, I was working. Um, tried to become a chef for a couple of years. That didn't work out. I saw an, average, an ad on, on TV one night probably about two o'clock in the morning. And it was an ad from the Ontario government and said the average salary of a chef in Ontario was $40,000 a year. And at that time, that was not that exciting. You could not raise a family on that kind of money. And I went, well, if the average chef is 40,000 a year and I'm hoping to become a chef someday and I live in a very small sub average town, I am screwed if I want to be a chef. So I went into work the next day and quit my job, went back to construction. Um, Moved to Ottawa because Southern Ontario, back in those days, they were losing jobs uh, like nuts, right? Like, okay, Ontario's messed up, where I'm from. We're just, we're confused. We don't know what we want to do. Do we want to have jobs, not have jobs? Try to save the planet? No, it's not going to happen, right? So hydro bills are up. Uh, everybody took off. The jobs disappeared. And so we went north because if you live somewhere where no one wants to live, you can get a job because everybody else left because it's too damn cold. So that's why we came up here. Um, loved Ottawa. It's been good to us. Uh, a lot of good years. Um, been a general contractor in Ottawa uh, almost 20 years of my life. Uh, had a lot of different experiences. Uh, really enjoyed working on old homes. Worked for a couple of other different firms. Uh, so I've had a lot of experiences with a lot of different construction technologies and and materials and ages of homes, from new construction to century-old places. I grew up as a kid with two brothers, and my parents flipped homes every year. That's how we got started. So outside of that, yeah, I've seen it, been there, done that. I've got 30 years in the trade, and since I worked 100 hours a week, I've got 75 years of experience. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and my knees and my back, uh, they would attest to that. Uh, outside of that, I don't have much to say, you know, I'm, I'm a happily married man of 30 years plus, <laughs> keep up the good work, and uh, that's about all I got on me, my story is a little on the boring side, maybe others could tell it with a little more excitement, but uh, that's how I've come to learn things, every time there was a problem, we had to solve it, didn't get to run away from it, so um, solving problems is what gets you down and dirty and figuring things out, we got to realize that there's a lot of mixed construction technologies going on there. So as things were advancing and our understanding changed, materials changed, products changed, things didn't work together anymore. There's just nothing but problems out there. So what I did is I became a specialist in understanding how to make every different age of home with different construction technologies um, be brought up to current standards as close as possible based on the age of that home without wasting all your money. So I kind of think I got a good practical grasp on how to do things without getting nuts. Because yeah, you can solve any problem if you want to throw enough money at it. But for most people, um, solving your problem involves being um, practical and making choices. And those choices can be difficult. 
So hopefully on this channel, we help you make those choices in a practical manner. Um, if you're not into practical, you know, then just pull out your wallet and pay somebody to do it for you. But if you need practical help, that's what we're here for. Oh my goodness, I stopped looking at comments for five seconds. Look what happens. Uh, termite damage, that sucks. I love where I live because we don't get termites. It's too damn cold for them. They won't live up here. We never have that problem. Um, uh, yeah, you're welcome, Sean. Happy to share. It just seems kind of boring. I'm more excited about my future than my past, to be honest with you. Uh, is there a solution for rafter that moves up in winter, down in summer, causes cracks in wall seams? Yes. More insulation in your attic. <laughs> See, now there's a question I can answer. Oh, finally, we have a couple minutes left and I will explain to you a phenomenon that happens on homes. All right, here's your rafter, here's your outside wall, here's your kitchen counter. All right, you're gonna love this. So we have insulation in the wall, right? And we have insulation between the rafters and sometimes even a little bit on top of the rafters depending on the edge of your home. And then it gets freezing cold outside and the cold penetrates the wall and there's a freezing point somewhere in the middle. Now the frozen part of the wood had moisture content and that freezes and it forces that, that part of the two by four outwards and you end up with this looking wall. It's exaggerated to get the idea. And then you'll know if your house has got the right insulation because your kitchen is going to be on the outside wall in these old houses because they always put the sink underneath the window, right? And your countertop is going to crack and it's going to, the wall is going to push away from your countertop and every winter you're going to have a gap. Or the same thing happens up here if you don't have enough. The wood has to curve. And so you'll have an, uh, a floor joist over the whole house and there'll be this interior wall here in a hallway or something, right? And this joint gets stretched and cracks and this joint cracks every year because the wood is bowing. That's normal. The only way you solve that is put in enough insulation that you move the freezing point high enough up that none of that wood is getting cold. Okay? That will solve your problem once and for all. No amount of screwing things together is going to solve that. Okay? That freezing action will tear that wood apart even if it's nailed or screwed together. You got to add more insulation, move your freezing point, keep your wood from freezing. There you go. Now, there is some good old fashioned technology that you're not going to get on HGTV. All right. Is there a solution for rafter? I just answered that question. Is it the same person? <laughs> I have to scroll down. Lovely. Oh, Robert says he's using my videos to remodel his house. Well, hopefully it didn't turn out to be a total mess. Congratulations. That's cool. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our new channel, there's a link on the screen right now. Go ahead and do it. Yes, water expands when it freezes. How about that? Right? Nothing like some grade five science. Ooh, video's live. Okay, folks, that's it. We're going to go now. The new video on the new channel is now live. We are all going to watch it together. And I am going to answer all of your comments. I'm going to go home. The live studio is at Max's house. I'm driving home. I'm going to jump on the comment section, answer all your questions. If you have questions that you're asking tonight you didn't get an answer to, put them in the comment section of that video and I will answer that tonight before I go to bed. I promise. Don't ask too many. I'm tired. It's been a long day. <laughs> all right. Jeff out. We'll see you all later.